Okay, so let's find the critical numbers of sine x when x is between 0 and 2 pi. And, and why might we want to make, force x to be between 0 and 2 pi? Well, we know that minimums and maximums only happen at critical numbers, and sine function goes on forever, and it just is a wave, so it's got a ton of minimums and maximums. So if we didn't, if we didn't say between 0 and 2 pi, we would have to list all of these, and this would just keep going. And it goes in the other direction, too. So we would have to list all of those critical numbers. Or we would have to create some formula that tells us the critical numbers. OK, some sequence. Anyways, uh, so, so we're only looking between uh, 0 and 2 pi. OK, that's why. Now, let's, let's take the derivative. That's the way we find critical numbers. And this derivative is easy, hopefully. Well, it's easy if you already know it. It's actually a little bit difficult if you don't. But the derivative of sine x is just cos x. OK, so now we have to figure out when cosine of x equals 0. Cosine exists for every x, right? You can plug in any x you want, so it's going to always exist. So when does this equal 0? So cosine of x equals 0. And when does that happen? Well, it happens at pi over 2 and, and 3 pi over 2. And if you don't know that, then, then hopefully I'll be making some trig videos soon. Or you could, you could look up a table of values. There's a lot of ways you could figure that out. But hopefully you just know that, that x is going to be equal to pi over 2, or in other words, 90 degrees, and 3 pi over 2. It's the cosine that you can almost think of it. Well, never mind. I'm not going to get into that. That's beyond this video. Okay, so those are our critical numbers. Now let's, that was easy enough. Finding critical numbers, hopefully if you've learned anything from these example videos, that finding critical numbers is not too hard. And now let's look at, at the sine function and see if that makes sense. So I have one too many intervals, or, or I went from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, but I didn't, I guess I didn't mean to do that. Anyways, at, at pi over 2, we said that was a critical number, and 3 pi over 2. And sure enough, those are our, that's our maximum point and our minimum point. Okay, let's look at that with its derivative. So its derivative is just cosine, and this is a really cool relationship that, oops, that sine and cosine have. Let me get that back here. So cosine is dotted is dotted in red, and remember that's just the derivative. And of course, when cosine is pi over two, it's zero. That was our max up here. When cosine is three pi over two, it's zero. That was our minimum. And then we could do what we did in the last video and break this into into intervals and try and examine them in that in that way okay so to the left of pi over 2 cosine is positive so the slopes of of sine should be positive or in other words to the left of pi over 2 the derivative is positive so the slope should be positive and that's true between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 the derivative is negative, so the slope should be negative. And yep, they certainly are. All the way down to here, the slopes are all negative. And then to the right of 3 pi over 2, the derivatives, the derivative cosine is positive, so the slope should be positive, and they certainly are. Okay, so that's just another example of of finding critical numbers and 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 being able to understand the the relationship between a function and its derivative see you in the next video